Welcome back to Beauty Defined. This is part two. I have the same outfit on. Don't judge me. Once again, I had to break down the videos, okay? You're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. So I have five, actually six more tips on how to be successful. So my next tip is to be thankful. It is so hard to be thankful sometimes because if you have an issue or a difficulty that you're dealing with in your current circumstance and you're like, what am I going to do? But just think about it and just say, you know what? I'm grateful for my mobility. I'm grateful for my car. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful for my health. Find things to be thankful about because this journey is a long one. The journey to success is a long one and you will be tested, okay? So your next tip is to learn from good and bad experiences. Even learn from good and bad decisions. My previous uh, video, I said to take risk. And one thing that I, I've had to learn on my own is to make an executive decision, even if it's the bad decision, even if it's the wrong one. You have to make a decision. And that's part of taking risks. But you have to learn from good and bad experiences. What if you make a bad decision? What are you going to do? Are you just going to give up and just give up on your journey? Or what if you're already successful and you make a bad decision? And now everything that you've done is on the media. Think about celebrities. Think about when they make a bad decision or a bad mistake. And now it's all over the magazines. It's, man, sometimes they'll even create a freaking... Uh, documentary about your mistakes and your bad decisions you have to bounce back learn 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 if you're in a position right now and it's that's not your destination you're saying I'm just working this job right now to get to where I want to be learn from the culture that you're in learn from the environment that you're in this space that you're in if you don't like your colleagues or if you don't like your employer or if you don't like yourself some of y'all don't be like yourselves that's that's a whole nother video but you have to ask yourself, what is this person teaching me, right? Let's say you have, you don't really like your employer and you'll be amazed. Many people don't like their employers. I mean, there's studies out there that show that people don't really hate their jobs. They hate who they work with or who they work for. If you don't like your employer, for example, you have to reflect and say, okay, what don't I like about him or her? And what am I learning? What is this person trying to teach me? Because this person is teaching you something, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. If you want to be an entrepreneur one day and you're, work, you're working for someone and you don't like their personality, think to yourself, okay, when I become a boss, when I become my own employer, I'm not going to handle situations like this person did. I'm not going to be easily uh, angered as my employer, my current employer, right? Learn, learn, learn. That's the only way you're going to grow. Learn from the good, the bad, and the ugly. Learn, and that's going to make you a better entrepreneur. That's going to make you a better partner. That's going to make you a better child. That's going to make you a better, whatever role that you're playing right now and you want to succeed in it, try to figure out how can I become better? And how are the people around me teaching me? When someone betrays you, even in your, in your work environment, Think to yourself, now this has taught me something. So when I get to, top, to the top, I know how to handle difficult people. I know how to handle betrayal. I know how to sense betrayal. I know how to discern when betrayal is coming. I'm telling you guys, you have to think deeper than just surface level when you want to be successful. Next tip is to study and master your craft. Nowadays, we have access to almost everything, you guys. Like... I researched on YouTube to learn how to make, you know, YouTube videos. I researched on where to get my camera from. I researched, I mean, you can find access to everything. It's just on your finger, in the tips here. I'm not gonna play with myself. Information is at the tip of your fingertips. Does that even make sense? No, it doesn't. Oh, scratch that. I'm not making this video over. Once again, all the information you need, you could just log into your computer and just look it up or go to the library and look it up. So we're living in the best time, honestly, to be whatever it is that you wanna become. 
because of social media, because of access to information. I mean, thousands and thousands of resources and outlets, if not millions of, of resources. I mean, there's a video on almost everything out there. And so how can you master your craft? Study the greats. Study the people that are the best at it in your, in your local community, the people in your state, the people in your country. If you want to become an entrepreneur and you want to sell merchandise, for example, you can look that up on YouTube and try to figure out how do I get started. This is information that the prior generation didn't have. Our parents and their grandparents and our great grandparents did not have. Take advantage of it because nowadays you can master your craft a lot easier and quicker and smoother than the prior generation. Whether you want to acknowledge it or not, let's be honest, man. Social media, there's there's a there's a positive to social media. There's a positive to having access to internet and having access to libraries. These are all things that the prior generations may have not had had. And so be thankful for it and study and master your craft. Read books, watch online seminars, become better, become the better version of yourself at whatever it is that you're doing. If you want to be a great mechanic, figure it out. Read a book, watch videos. When people tell me they don't like to read, watch a video, listen to a podcast. That's not an excuse. Anyways, Next tip, number nine, network or get a sponsor or a mentor. Now, there's a possibility that you may not have mentors in your community. Let's say you wanna become mm, a doctor, right? There's probably a doctor in your community, but some towns are very, very small, okay? I grew up in a small town and you may not physically see what you want to become. When you're in a situation like that, you say, I want a mentor, I want to be a doctor, I want a mentor that's a doctor, but I don't know any doctors. If you don't create a LinkedIn account, if you don't create a Facebook account, if you don't try to figure out what networking events they have in the, at the medical school that's nearby or 20, 30 minutes away, get in. Get your foot in the door. Get in. Because there are people online that are willing to mentor you. There are people on LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn, by the way, so create an create account. You can find people in the industry that you want to join at some point, or you want to enter at some point, that are willing to talk to you. And if they're not, find someone else. At the end of the day, like find someone else. You want to be a doctor? There's thousands of doctors in the country. Find one online and just email them and say, hey, you know what, I would love to grab lunch sometime. This person could even be out of state. I've talked to people in different states, just asking them random questions, especially seasoned professionals. Hey, you know, this is my situation, what do you think? And most of the time they're willing to talk, but if you can't find someone that's willing to talk, find someone else. I mean, come on, don't limit yourself to one person. Now, if you want a mentor, mentorship means something different. I mean. Not everyone can sit down with you and have lunch with you every month. And there are people that will, there are people that won't. Take what you can take. If the person says, well, I can't really meet with you every month to have lunch, but I would like to have a phone conversation with you every now and then to check in and see where you're at. Take advantage of it. Sometimes people don't have much time and just take the time that they give you, okay? And um, when I said get a sponsor, for example, this is where I learned the difference between a sponsor and a mentor. It's really because I like, uh, really like LinkedIn all the articles. Follow Forbes, by the way, if you're um, on LinkedIn. I read an article that discussed the difference between a mentor and a sponsor. And it was just so interesting to me. I mean, it was a one page article. I'm probably being dramatic and deep. But it said that a mentor is someone that encourages you and inspires you and gives you advice. Right? That's the purpose of a mentor. So you may have lunch with them every now and then. They check in on you. But a sponsor is also like a mentor, but the biggest difference is that they want to make you their protege. Not all mentors want you to be like them. Some mentors probably want you to be better, but either, either way, a, a sponsor is someone that says, I want you to be my protege. I'm a basketball player, I want you to be the next great. I'm a politician, I want you to be the next great. I'm a teacher, I want you to be a professor, I want you to be the next great. That's a sponsor, and a sponsor does more than encourage you. They bring your name into spaces that you have yet to enter. That's deep. 
that's a sponsor. If you can find a sponsor, kudos to you. A sponsor is someone that will bring your name into rooms, into meetings that you have yet to enter. That's deep. So imagine wanting to be a doctor and this, and you meet a doctor online or whatever, or in person, and this doctor talks to his or her doctor friends about you, talks to their employer about you, talks to the medical, you're not even there by the way. You're not even there to just say, hey, I know so-and-so and I think he would be a great candidate. That's a sponsor, someone that brings your names and open doors for you and you're not even physically there. So whether you get a sponsor or a mentor, um, it would be great, but if, you, if you're in a situation where you absolutely feel like you can't, hit me up, email me, I'm gonna put my email below, or um, comment below, I can help you out. Um, but network, make sure that you network. And that's another way to meet someone that you want to mentor you or sponsor you at some point. Network, get your name out there, meet new people. Even if you're an introvert, whether you're an introvert or extrovert, you need to learn how to, especially if your profession requires it, you need to learn how to get out there, right? Like, it's, I think you could probably be an introvert if you want to be a doctor, to be honest, because, I mean, but if you want to be a politician, you probably should, you, you should definitely um, network and um, you should definitely get to know people because at some point you're going to want someone to vote for you. I digress. My next point is to give back. Speaking of mentorship, you can mentor other people. You can mentor young people. You can mentor teenagers and students and and whatever it is that you want to be, if you do nails for a living, if you do hair, or mentor someone. Preferably someone that's younger than you. Preferably someone that's younger than you because they need to know the way. Especially if you come from a community that lacks resources, mentor someone from that community. Even if you don't go back to live in that community, you can reach out to them online and say, hey, I see that you want to become an entrepreneur. I see you want to write a book one day. Here are some tips. That's one of the greatest ways to show how thankful you are and how blessed you truly are is by mentoring someone else. Or even if you don't call, consider yourself a mentor, at least just reach out to them and say, hey, I'm encouraging you to never give up. Mentor, give back, give back. That's the only way that the next generation is going to get better is if we look back and we say, how can we help the next person? How can I help a young girl that was in my situation because I didn't have all the resources. Now I want to be a resource to her. And the person may not take advantage of it, but, that, advantage of it, but that's on them. That's not on you. Because you don't want to wait till you make it to mentor, I don't think. I think that you can mentor, if you say you wanna be a doctor, for example, don't wait till you become a doctor to start mentoring people. Mentor people when you're in college. When you're in college, mentor a high school student. When you get to med school, mentor a college student. When you become a doctor, mentor a student in med school or a college student, right? Like, don't wait to give back. There are people that are waiting on you to, to, to help them because they need opportunities. And the last tip, believe in yourself. Believe, believe, believe in yourself. It sounds so cliche, but there's this inner deep feeling that you have to have about you going to make it no matter what by any means necessary and ignore the negativity because you will experience a lot of hate and negativity. But let me tell you one thing. I, I've given you 11 tips to success. Being liked is not a prerequisite to success. It's not one of the tips that I share. Whether you're a good person or not, people are going to dislike you and they're going to be negative and they're going to say, you can't become a doctor. You can't become a president. You can't become a teacher. You can't become a professor. It doesn't matter what they say. What you believe is the most important thing. It sounds so cliche, but I'm telling you, if you don't have this inner feeling where you say, you know what, even if I fail, I'm going to get back up and I'm going to go at it because I want to be successful in this particular industry and I'm willing to do absolutely anything and only death could stop me. If you don't have that mindset, kind of like Eric Thomas says, you have to want it as bad as you want to breathe, people are going to squeeze you out. This is a cutthroat world. There are some cutthroat industries. There's some industries that are friendlier than others. But at the end of the day, people are looking at you and they're wanting you to make it, but there are people that don't want you to make it. 
And people want to see you do well, but they don't want you doing better than them. And you have to have a strong mindset. And that comes from this belief, believing yourself, believing yourself, being resilient, being determined. So again, if you want more tips, feel free to comment below or I'm going to put my email below as well. I want you to know that you can accomplish all things. You will be successful in whatever it is that you do in life as long as you follow my 11 tips. If you have any additional tips, feel free to comment below. Once again, you're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. And thank you again for supporting Beauty Define. Peace.